Recently, I got word of this massive data breach, which had been posted to this website, pxahb.xyz, and it consists of email addresses and passwords from 1,500 odd websites, in total 27 million accounts detailed. And this is a pretty hefty data breach, and it's quite surprising to see nothing in news about it yet. It seems the breach may have occurred sometime late last year. We have a couple of dates here, so that says 12th of December 2017, and the other folder has the files dated 8th of December 2017. So in the background, I had a couple of these websites open, and I've done a little bit of research of some of them, trying to get an idea of just what had been going on. And one common feature I can find is that the majority of them are standard HTTP websites. They don't have encryption on them. So if I go to a website, it says connection is not secure in Firefox. And these websites have a shop and login screens. So it turns out what we have are plain text, email addresses and passwords. And it's quite interesting to see the choices that people make when left to their own devices on choosing a password. And I have to say, the vast majority of them are absolute rubbish. Most people will never learn. The trouble is when a breach occurs and it reveals a person's email and password, you'll then find odds are they've used that same password elsewhere. In fact, very often that happens. So yes, you could potentially access their email account and then work out what bank they're with and maybe go onto the banking website to try their password. Well, if that password doesn't work, then just go back to the uh, email. Well, do a password reset from the online banking, go to the email and get the password login. So yes, your life can be completely ruined because you have the same password on multiple websites. Another interesting thing about this breach, it covers websites from many different countries. So we have, in this case, some very German specific words. Uh, many of these won't make sense to me. Others that are British websites, yes, they do make more sense to me. Well, I'm British, so yeah, it kind of makes sense. Yes, I would understand the language more of where I live. Oh, look, there's some very unique British things here. Ford Focus, yes, yes, that's a British car. Scotland, hmm. In fact, I have seen quite a lot of cars on the list. Arsenal rule. <laughs> um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that's very common. But I am interested in how these passwords have been gained. Because when you look at this password here, that's not a common thing I would see typed. Yes, that may make sense in another language, but that's not going to appear in your average dictionary, which is what most password crackers will use, is a dictionary built up from previous attacks. So go over dictionary, make a password hack simple. Something like that wouldn't necessarily appear in there. And I saw another instance where Someone had typed in their email address, and the whole lot was in uppercase, and then the first letter of their password was lowercase, and then the rest of their password was in uppercase, which to me would mean they had the caps lock on when they entered their password, that time when they entered the password. And I saw quite a few other instances where the email address was mistyped. So were these passwords grabbed out of a database, or were they sniffed off the wire? And if they were sniffed off the wire, how and where did it happen? As it turns out, the company I work for had quite a few people in the breach, and, and I got a bit of information from a couple of them. And one user provided a very useful insight in that the password he'd been using was no more than two years old. Well, he said 18 months, but let's round it up to two years. And that he'd never tried accessing these websites from, say, a potentially hostile location, for instance, a coffee shop or fast food Wi-Fi outlet. So you'd access the websites from either home or work. Interesting, but many of these look like they've been sniffed. So I'll come back to the point, where were they sniffed from? But I could be wrong here. Maybe it is a data breach of the websites. But another factor that does go with the potential that the passwords were sniffed is that the websites are HTTP only and lack encryption, HTTPS encryption. Anyone else got any other thoughts of what might have happened? Since I have been doing a few tutorials in Bash lately, let me show you some of the tools you can use to start dissecting this information. So I can use cat to merge all the files together and output the results into a file in my home folder called file1.txt, so I concatenate all the files. Run the same command here. 
Then going over to the home folder, I can see these two files. So one that's 100 meg and one that's 700 meg. Then I'll merge those two files together and put them into a single file called emailpass.txt. So our emailpass.txt. So but before I go too far with this, I should have made a change to the file because it won't actually open up properly in a text editor because it seems like there are some binary characters in here. So it's not a text only file. So I could get around the problem by using strings, which will get rid of the binary characters. So I'll concatenate the files together, pipe the command through to strings, and then make a new file, emailpass.txt. So you'll see it loses some of the size. So it's 837 meg, and what will it go down to? 836.6 meg. So yeah, I lost a few lines, but probably nothing big. So opening the file now in the text editor is perfectly fine. So yeah, that's no problem at all. Taking the line count gives us 27 million lines. I can extract the passwords out of the file using the command cut. So using a delimiter of a colon and taking the second field, that will pipe all the passwords through to passwords.txt. And sure enough, yes, that's the list of passwords. And I can do a similar thing with email addresses, taking the first field before the colon delimiter, and then taking the second field after the at sign. And there we are, we have the list of email domains. And now to get a count of all the unique passwords and how many times they appear. So I can do the command unique-c to count, well, each instance of that line, but it only works on sorted data. So first off, I have to sort the file, get the unique count, and then I'm going to sort it by numeric and reverse. So it will show the most common password first and then decrease. I'll show you the result, it'll make more sense. But it does take a little bit of time for this command to run, or, or I should say set of commands to run. <laughs> and there we go, we have the results. I'd ignore the second and third line because there were some oddities with the data. Let's do a similar thing with email addresses as well. And account of the email addresses, well, that's very predictable. We have Gmail first, followed by Hotmail and Yahoo. Very similar to any other breach that I have seen. Account of the number of unique passwords gives us 12.9 million. And for the number of email domains, that's 1.5 million. Let's do this. Let's have a look then. So I've got a 229 meg file. So as I said, we probably want to ignore those two. And there we are. 214,786 people has the password 123456. Well, that is the most common password that I've seen on the most breaches. 12345 appears, and password very predictable. All ones, QWERTY, yeah, very common. That one was a surprise password to see. Now let me show you what's up with that one. It's a little bit weird. So if I do a recursive grep, you can see the website it appeared on was Candy USA. Now many of these emails have a common feature that they all have dot top in them. So whether that's someone who's gone around registering absolutely loads of accounts or what, it's all very strange really. So if I get a count of how many times it appears associated with a dot top email address, that's 12,178 times versus the entire total of 12,504. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Taking a look at this, taking a look at this other weird password, and it appears many of them have come from this uh, website, experimental.ro. So I would ditch some of them, but um, it's interesting to see a few countries mentioned here. but they do actually appear to be used in various places. So, yeah, it does seem that people may have willingly chosen that password. Password one, or just one literally? <laughs> sure, there's a good password, isn't it? So, yeah. No, a good password is not a good password. What I would say is if your password has appeared anywhere in the screen I'm looking so far, then it's quite likely that these words have been placed in a dictionary. And these dictionaries are used to rapidly attack password hashes. So yeah, it will result in your password 
being cracked within a matter of seconds. It shows that people are very predictable. And what have we seen so far? Lowercase letters, numbers, yeah. Even if you have a restriction placed that you must choose an uppercase character, lowercase characters, numbers, and maybe a symbol, people will generally choose them in that order. So the first letter of the word is uppercase, then you have lowercase, and then you often have the number. Yeah, it seems to be quite regularly done. Anyway, this video has gone on a while, but I hope you found this uh, an interesting insight to this massive data breach. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. And incidentally, here's what's at the bottom of the list. So I'm not quite sure what's gone on with some of these, but uh, yeah, there's obviously some gash data that's come through.